us. Living on the roads, it just means freedom in every sense of the word. You know, we can just go and park up wherever we like in however beautiful or remote an area. We can also just leave whenever we like. And it also gives us the freedom to pursue our photo and video projects and go and meet people as well. Hello everyone, I'm Ben and this is Lucy and this is our van. Let's take a look inside. Our van is a 2002 LDV Convoy with a 2.4 litre Ford Duratorque engine under the hood. We've done many miles in her over the past four years, travelling around 70,000 miles in total, putting it at over double its original mileage. But she's been pretty reliable the whole way. We have had to replace just about every component of the braking and suspension systems, but fortunately the engine has done us good. Now we've chosen to decorate the cab, make it quite homely, because it's probably where we spend most of our time while we're on the road. So we've got this lovely Baja style steering wheel cover here. And I also chose to paint this funky mandala design over the steering wheel. And also we've got these lovely matching seat covers as well, which just brings the whole thing together. So back when we converted our van, we decided we wanted to replace the original rust white slash tie-dye spray paint look with something a little friendlier. So we went for this colour that we like to call liquid sky, with a nice two-tone look with the white roof, blue van, and more recently, I decided to also paint the wheels a matching white and blue, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, when we painted the van, we decided not to get it sprayed. We chose instead to roller it on ourselves, partly because it's cheaper and partly because we take this van to all sorts of places, off-road, through narrow lanes, brambles, you name it. So it just ends up getting scratched. So by rollering it, it makes it super easy to just slap on another coat of paint and off we go. <laughs> We decided to live this lifestyle, I think, around when we graduated uni, which was back in 2015. Um, ben was thinking of travelling to the Middle East. I'd kind of always wanted to see more of Europe. And so our ideas kind of came together and we ended up buying a van after saving up to get it all summer. Converting our van wasn't really easy because we knew literally nothing about DIY or mechanics when we started. So kind of every process was a learning curve. And we were also on a really tight budget. Uh, we ended up spending around £1,700 on the whole conversion. So we used a lot of like recycled and upcycled second-hand materials. Converting the van also took around 10 months initially, which we did over the winter, which made it extra challenging. And then every time we've returned from a trip, we've kind of added things to it and adapted it to suit our needs, adding in, you know, like an oven or new plumbing, things like that. This is our kitchen. We chose to build quite a large kitchen in our van because Ben's a chef and we both really enjoy cooking so it's quite important for us that we had a space to do that. Um, over here on the left we've got our sink. The sink itself was taken from an old caravan. The tap we've recently replaced because the old one was leaking so we've replaced it with this lovely antique silver tap. Back here the splashback, this is made from Cornish slate tiles so it kind of it's like taking a little piece of home with us wherever we go. Up here is kind of the main feature of our van and definitely our favourite part, which is the spice rack. So this is made just from an old plank of wood that we found and uh, attached some lovely little pieces of driftwood to it from various Cornish beaches as well. The spices are all held in by this lovely hemp rope and this beautiful little piece of driftwood here. And it was kind of important for us just to have all of our spices out because we love cooking, we love using lots of different flavours from different cuisines, so we wanted to have all of these readily available. Down here is our worktop, another favourite part of our van. This was made from old scaffolding boards because we kind of wanted to mimic the effect of live edge wood. So we took these, cut them down, charred them with a blowtorch and then coated them with some Danish oil and this really brings out the wood grain and these lovely patterns in here. Up here we've got our owl jars which is always a talking point in our van. These just uh, are attached to the spice rack and we just kind of use them to keep things like coffee and sugar and flour in for easy access. Up here we have our top cupboards. Uh, ben kind of decorated these with some old pieces of pallet wood, finished it off with this lovely trim here, and the handles are made of these beautiful chunks of driftwood that we found. So in here we keep just our bowls, our plates, our cups, and of course the most important thing, which is tea. 
And in this one over here, this is just a bit of like food storage and things like that. So then down here below the worktop, we have three more storage cupboards. Again, these are finished off with pallet wood and these really rustic looking hinges to give them this beautiful look that we just love. So in this cupboard under the sink is where we keep our cleaning products, tinned food, things like that. And then we also have a 15 litre water container under here, which we can keep drinking water in. This is kind of just to minimise the amount of plastic bottles we're using while we're on the road. In this cupboard here, we keep our oven. It's a little Vanessa Flavel oven. It's an oven that's designed to be the right size for a boat. It runs off gas and it's just perfect for anything we want to cook in it, really. Underneath we keep all of our pots and pans and also our gas bottles as well. Up here we have our cutlery drawer. This is another thing that was salvaged from Ben's caravan when we took that apart. We've just decorated this with some more lovely pieces of driftwood to give it a bit of a personal touch. Then finally down here in this cupboard this is where we keep our fridge, it's just a little 12 volt cool box. We did have a larger cool box before but honestly we just didn't need the space so we decided to downsize. And in here we keep our gas stove, then we can lift this out of the cupboard, pop it on the side and attach the hose to this bayonet fitting that's on the side of our kitchen unit. This is just because we didn't want to have a gas stove permanently out taking up valuable prep space. This is our bed area, where we do most of our living, working and sleeping. It's really cosy, we've got this lovely thick mattress on here now which we picked up second hand and that really helps to insulate from any of the cold coming up from underneath. Um, up, here we've got, ooh, <laughs> up here we've got our piece of U, this was to act as kind of a divider between the bed area and the kitchen and it's also where we kind of keep all of our control panels, you know, the solar charge controller thermometer, things like that, just so we can keep an eye on everything in one place. It's also got a couple of little handy USB chargers in for charging our phones at night. Um, up here we've got a couple of 12 volt fans for when it gets a bit hot and stuffy in the van. These are quite a lifesaver when you're trying to sleep and it's like 20 degrees at night. Now the back doors are something that we recently revamped. Up until now these were bare metal and that was letting a lot of cold in the winter. So we've insulated them with some foil bubble insulation covered them with plywood and then attached all this lovely cladding with um, this beautiful charred wood effect to kind of keep in theme with the rest of the van. Also the diamond shaped windows were a little idea of mine, I wanted to go for something a little bit different so we just sort of cut the cladding out around these, added in some perspex so we've essentially got like double glazing on the back doors and then just finished them off with some really cute little curtains with some thermal blackout lining. Up here we've got the plant holders these are just made from Jubilee clips like that you find on a car that holds the plants really well so they don't fall out when we're driving and we've also got a couple of shells up here just made from some lovely driftwood we found on the beach. Over here we have our storage hammocks where we keep our clothes. Now we've chosen to go for hammocks because we originally had a cupboard in the van up here but the clothes were getting a bit damp and a bit mouldy so we decided to switch to these hammocks and it gives them ventilation and keeps all of our clothes nice and fresh. Down here, this is what I call the bed desk. This is just made out of some scraps of plywood, some pieces of driftwood again, I think you can see a theme here, and just varnished. This is great for working on our laptops, for eating, and we can just simply move it out of the way when we don't need a table. Up here, this is what I have called the vandalier. We had various different trials with fairy lights and all of them kept breaking, falling down, so we finally settled on a lovely feature piece of driftwood with some fairy lights wrapped around it and it creates this beautiful warm cozy light for the evenings. Up here we have our porthole. Now this was kind of an accidental feature in the van because after our first trip when we got back to Cornwall on the first night the winds ripped our solar panel off and left us with a bit of a hole in the roof. So while we were reattaching our solar panel we decided to remove the old leaky fan that comes with LDVs that was stuck in the ceiling and we replaced it with a sheet of blue perspex um, and then the porthole itself were, was made from a stainless steel dinner plate and I kind of just gave it to my dad he went off into the garage for an hour, came out and he'd made us this so it's a beautiful funky feature in our van 
Over here we have the toiletry area. Again, this was kind of um, an accidental feature, just where we had the different layers of cladding that kind of met in the middle. So I decided to create this little storage shelf that can hold all of our toothbrushes and things like that without them falling out when we're driving. Um, underneath here we have our shower, which is fed for the tanks under the van. Uh, we did originally plan to use it indoors, but we found we just enjoyed sharing outdoors too much. So we just pull it out the door to use it. This is a little mirror up here that I picked up from the car boot. I just love it because it's a convex mirror, so you can see yourself and the whole van in it at the same time. And it looks a little bit kind of rough around the edges, which I like. And we've got our light switch panel here, which is made from a uh, reclaimed piece of oak, which we just drilled out some holes and popped the switches in. And finally down here we have our ottoman. Um, this was an idea that came after our first trip when we had all these various bags and boxes of things that were just flying around every time we drove. So we picked up this ottoman secondhand for free, revamped it with some pallet wood, some coffee sacks, which is stuff for some old pillows. And it's really great for storing all these extra little bits that don't really have a home. And it's also a nice bit of extra seating for guests. Underneath our bed we kind of wanted to maximise all the little tiny nooks and crannies left over and try and squeeze in as much storage as we can. So in this far corner here we have the world's tiniest library where we just store a few different books to keep us entertained in the evenings. Then in here with this cupboard here houses all of our toiletries. And over this side we have a drawer this is just for underwear and things like that. And you may have also noticed this design on the front of our bed. This was done by my friend who's a local artist. We kind of told her we wanted something a bit mandala, hippie inspired. So she came up with this and we love it. And it also glows in the dark. Finally, up here we have our cab shelf. This is a really handy extra bit of storage up here where we keep bulky items like clothes, towels and jumpers. And we've also got a box which keeps some extra dry food storage. Up here we've mounted two Vibe speakers. These are 1200 watt total. And just down below we've got a 600 watt Fusion subwoofer because we like to listen to a bit of music while we're driving. So let's go and have a look in the back of the van where we'll find the service area. Underneath our bed is the service area, so this is where we keep all of our plumbing, electrics and heating systems. Now when we built our van, which was about four years ago now, there really wasn't a lot of information online about this kind of stuff, nowhere near as much as there is now, so we kind of had to create and DIY a lot of things under here. Over on the right hand side is our electrical system. Now we have two 120 amp hour batteries powering that. Mounting to this piece of plywood here, we have our fuses, our master fuse, our solar charge controller, our split relay, which allows us to charge either the leisure batteries, the van batteries, or both at the same time, and also allows us to start the van from whichever set of batteries we choose. Next to this, we have our inverter. This is just a 300 watt inverter. We used to have a 3000 watt one back when we had the intention of running a microwave and a mini oven in our van, which seems ridiculous now. Now next to this we have our cold water tank and on the other side a hot water tank. These are built from stainless steel chafing dishes, you know the kind of catering dishes you might have had in school. We got two of these and stuck them together with some sealant, some pot rivets and then fitted all the plumbing to these. This was because we couldn't find any kind of tank hot or cold that suited our needs when we built the van so we just decided to create our own and that gives us 40 litres of cold water, 40 litres of hot and 25 litres in the reserve tank here. Now hiding behind the reserve tank we've got two pumps, one for the hot water and one for the cold. These run off 12 volts so they use almost no electricity. Over here on the right hand side we have our Herbispatcher D5WZ. This is a diesel powered heater which originally was just intended to make hot water but we have also adapted it to make hot air as well to give us heating by running it through the heater matrix of a car. Now this works by heating up um, an internal coil which is filled with coolant and this circulates between the herb spatula into the hot tank and back out again. Um, after about 20 minutes or so we'll have hot water that's pretty much as close to boiling temperature as you can get. 
We also recently fitted a uh, resistor onto the heater matrix because it was kind of blowing air a little bit fast, making the air not particularly hot. So by fitting a resistor, we've slowed down the speed and increased the heat. Finally, next to this, we just have this little five litre jerry can to which we've raised a fuel line. This is just the fuel supply for the Herbis Batcher, which is totally independent from the main fuel tank of the van. So far we've been to 26 countries, all in Europe, um, over the course of about three years. Uh, that's everywhere from Western Europe to Portugal, Spain and France to as far east as Ukraine and as far south as Greece. We're currently into our third seven month long road trip around the Balkans. This is our second time in the Balkans and in the winter. Um, we started off in the French Alps and we're travelling east, hopefully as far east as Turkey, visiting 13 countries in between, seeking out adventures, the most amazing roads to drive, the best trails to hike, rivers and lakes to swim in, and of course the best hot springs to bathe into. And our main goal for this trip is just to find as many photo documentary projects as possible to tell people's stories, to get an insight into their lives as well as experiencing the cuisine, the culture and everything in these countries as if we were locals ourselves.